So the area this test will be done is from Williams Road. We'll be driving out here, doing a U-turn at the truck stop and coming back. This stretch has been chosen because it's a very bad road. It's got a little bit of everything in it that will stuff up self-driving vehicles. So the first one, which is this corner here, it's just beyond what the torque limit of what the car can handle. So it may or may not make it around there. Next is somewhere around here. They did roadworks on the road and never bothered repainting the road. So for over a year there's been no lines there on the left hand side of the road. So you're going to see how well it handles an area where the lines have disappeared for 100 or 200 metres. We do our U-turn and return. The left hand side, oh, it's always the left hand side when you're driving down the road. Anyway, what becomes the left hand side of the road on this is actually rougher than the right hand side. When we get up to this area here, we lose lines. So when we split here, it becomes a curb. And during all these areas, there's no, uh, no curb and no lines. As we go around this corner, it's a little bit wider. The car can make it around with no trouble. But the center dash line is actually very faded because it's an area where a lot of people cross the road. And as such, it's also um, very hard for the camera to track it. This area here, of course, there's also a gap in the curb because it's an area where you can turn. So this has been... The, this has been a corner where 0.5.8 and you know subsequently all the other versions after it have really shown how good they were going around this corner because there was no other version of open pilot that was able to do it and then for the rest of this trip along here we've got faded lines until we get to this corner which is where we're going to end the drive okay syncing all three videos is not that easy because regardless how much you try and drive exactly the same you don't so here we go along that first bit that I said that they're all the same you see that the original well sorry I should say community 2 engaged first because we can turn that on at any time whereas comma AI had to turn on the cruise control and lane keep had to get above 55 kph now I've got the steering wheel up the top it's worth looking at those and see how little they're moving on all of them I really can't see any noticeable difference between 0.5 and 0.6 in regards to how well it's centered. So as we come in, obviously you don't know what lane keeps doing because you can't see, but you'll see that uh, 0.5 jumped to the left and saw the curb, whereas 0.6 didn't. Now that meant that because it jumped to the curb, it was able to turn that little bit earlier and was actually able to get around the corner. It didn't get around the corner because it did a better job with vision. That was where 0.6 actually did a better job with vision. But because of that, it actually um, made it around the corner. Now you see that uh, constantly we're seeing lane keep disengaged. I have a pretty big alarm there so that you can see every time it happens. I'm doing the best I can to always let it uh, take over. I'm ignoring the fact that it crosses the white line quite often and just letting it drive the best it can. You can tell when it crosses the white line because the picture of the green car down the bottom flashes. When it's flashing, that means that it's going across the line. It's the lane departure warning. So despite lane departure warning, it's still generally, that's doing now, it still generally doesn't put enough torque on to get itself back in and it'll just disengage. But it didn't that time. So we're heading out of town now. Uh, this is where we go up to 80 k's. Now you notice the speed's different on uh, what they're reading. Now the reason being is that the speed reported by the wheels and the speed reported by the dash are not the same. The dash reporting is always 3% higher than what the speed is. So what I've done is increased it by 3% on what you read on Community 2, whereas uh, Devel on comma AI does not have that. So we're into the 100 zone now and that means that we're about to come up to the section which has got no lines. So we'll just sit through this boring section where they're working pretty much perfectly. You can see the big bump in the road. They're no longer perfectly in sync. Um, it's not really worth me syncing them up but I do sync them after we stop. So here we go out to the left and you see there's no lines on the left as we head out. There's no lines there 
and both 0.5 and 0.6 are doing a really good job of staying where they're meant to, whereas lane keep just disengaged. And when the lines reappear, it came back in beautifully, both of them, 0.5 and 0.6, perfect. Now what I'm gonna do, so this is the truck stop here. It didn't actually head far out as you can see. What I'm gonna do is slow them down. Now because if I touch the brake on 0.6, it will disengage. I tried to slow it all the way down to 30 years in cruise control, which is what I'm doing here. So unfortunately, it's a very, very slow at getting down to speed, but it's the only way that I can show it. Whereas, you know, with the stock system in mine, it'll keep steering um, even while I'm using the brake. And there we disengage on the stock because we're under 55. Now we disengage on comma because we touched the brake. And you'll see that even though I'm stopped, I've still got it engaged on community two. So as we're accelerating here, all I gotta do is just let go of the steering and it's already back and active. So we've got a pretty boring stretch coming back in. So what I'm going to basically point out is that the areas that you gotta watch when we get up to the first major corner is the inside where there's no curb, or where there's curb, sorry, and no lines. Now, why did I do this test at night? Because at night is where 0.6 seems to be not quite as good as 0.5. During the day, they were both nearly identical. If not, um, honestly, I think 0.6 is better than during the day. But the problem is during the night, I didn't experience it. I actually felt that it was not as good which is why I did this test to confirm it. Um, but for the most part, it's still pretty good. It's just a matter of whether it's worth, because when I bring out 0.6, which should be out you know, within hours of this video, the UI is going to look exactly the same as what you see there on Comer AI's version. It's not going to have any options to turn on and off. It's just going to be basically set up how I want, which is, no disengage, no camera being forwarded, no lane change assist. So basically mad on, sound off. The, uh, and then, yeah, the auto support for all new cars. So we're going to add all of those features in, but it's going to have the base UI and we're going to slowly add new features in. So you're not going to get a feature packed version like what you got in uh, Community or Community 2. Now, I really haven't been pointing out how often we get nags and disengages on lane keep. You can see that that system is actually horrible. It's, it really is bad. So, for the next part, we're going to see, basically, open pilot just keep driving perfectly. But, uh, yeah, lane keep, not so much. So, you can see, even though it's not disengaging here, it's wandering over the line. Yeah, it's disengaged again and it, it'll do that for pretty much the rest of the trip. It's very hard to keep riding, so even though it's running now, you can see that it's starting to drift over the line, and it manages to hold it, and then it starts to drift over the line again. Um, it actually does pretty good with curbs, which is quite surprising how bad it did on this night. So we're heading into the area, you can see there's no curbs on the right, uh, sorry, no lines on the right, just the curb, and you can see that open pilot's struggling to track it, but it's doing okay. Both of them are tracking it okay. Now here you can see that they're both trying to cut the corner, and then uh, 0.5 or community started going wide, whereas 0.6 just kept cutting the corner. So neither of them handled that corner. And you can see lane keep just disengaged with that whole area. The rest of this trip, both 0.5 and 0.6 are perfect, but lane keep kept disengaging which you see here, disengaged. And I kept trying to drag it back into the line, uh, lane, let go, I'm sorry about my voice, it's, it's hard for me to talk as well. And here it's driving and then all of a sudden disengages again. You drag it back in, disengages. Now we're coming to the stop. Because I need to use the brake, um, Devel branch disengages, lane keep assist disengages, and community two just keeps on steering me. Um, while I do have my hand on the wheel, I wasn't actually steering. Okay, now time to look at the data. First, policy disengage. 
that's how many times it disengaged due to policy. That's the 55 kph on lane keep assist and the pedal on comma AI. We have nags. We never saw that on comma AI or on Emitex. That's because the drive wasn't long enough. And we saw eight of them on lane keep assist. Then we have failures. That's how many times I had to grab the steering wheel and we had 11 failures on lane keep assist. Two on comma AI. And while there was only one on the Emitex fork, because it didn't take the left turn correctly, I'm putting that down as a 0.5. Now what I did was I took the time from after I got around the corner to when I made it to the corner again and excluded the U-turn, we had 446 seconds of video. So then what I've done is I've assumed that I lose two seconds every time the lane keep assist nags. What I have is how many seconds of driving I lost due to each of those reasons. So we have policy. I had 12 seconds that I should have been able to have at steering that I didn't due to the pedals and 17 seconds of steering that I could have had if it wasn't for that 55 kph limit. Lost to failures. We've got three seconds to the Emitex fork. I only had to grab it twice just to correct it. 16 seconds to comma AIs. That's, even though it didn't have that many failures, when we're turning right, coming around that sharp corner, I couldn't let go of the steering wheel. Every time I tried, it kept turning way too sharp, so I actually had to hold the steering wheel the whole way. And then we have the lane keep assist, which was 73 seconds of me holding the steering wheel, trying to, you know, stay on the road. And then seconds lost to nag, we've put 16 seconds down to lane keep. And that brings us to what we have here, total hands on wheels. And you can see there the difference between the systems. And then if we take into account just failures, that's the percent failure we see over there. Now it's worth noting this is not what you get on the freeway. On the freeway, neither Comma AI or Emitex are going to fail. You're going to have that so close to zero, you'd be blown away. But when I'm trying to find a route that points out everything that goes wrong with these forks, this is what we come up with. So again, lane keep assist is pointless and um, open pilot is incredibly good. And this is the honest difference between 0.6 and 0.5 in the dark on a tricky route.